everybody, my name is Matt Abbott. I am the founding owner of Nims and Fugs, which is uh, an independent spoken word record label. Um, and I'm doing these weekly Insta sessions from a living room just because obviously we're not allowed to go out and uh, experience live poetry in theatres and pubs and bars anymore. Um, so I just wanted to offer a platform for some of the leading talent in the country to share new work in a really relaxed format and give you guys obviously something to hopefully enjoy. Um, so it's been great for me. I've been able to contact people from all over the UK to come and do a little set. And tonight we've got Siley Katebi joining us. So Siley is a Zambian-born writer based in the Southwest. I first saw Siley perform at Shambhala Festival last summer. Absolutely incredible. Um, took my breath away. He was performing with Tong Fu and then did a poetry set the next day. Um, and I invited Siley to perform at Livewire Birmingham with us earlier in the year, back in February, and he absolutely stole the show. Um, so I'm really, really buzzing that he's joining us tonight. Uh, so, that's my intro over with. I shall see if Siley is there, if I remember how to use the tech. Here we are. Just as it reaches double figures, top stuff. Hi mate, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, good thanks. I always do that. I always have it the wrong way around. Yeah, like I had it in landscape, thinking everything is going to switch across, but it didn't happen. But yeah, so, I'm here now. Good entrance. A bit like doing a cartwheel onto stage, I think. Yeah, I think I might have to start considering that for the future. Absolutely just start flipping onto the stage. Health and safety are going to be going mad, but, you know, it is what it is. Look, if health and safety get to the point where we're allowed in a theatre with an audience and we can cartwheel backflip, it doesn't matter. Just even being allowed in there will be enough, I think. Like, you know, once we cross that line, anything goes. It's absolutely wishful thinking for me. I'm already thinking about cartwheels onto the stage and we're not allowed on the stage yet, but I'll keep yeah. that optimism for now. Fair. Why not? So how have you been doing, mate? Have you been all right this last couple of months? I know it's an odd question, but... It's been wild i think it's as soon as like before march the world just took a huge left turn and we're here now and like the last three months have been just a process of like just trying to find a gr like a sense of grounding from something so the world isn't what i used to think it was and yeah. but i think i'm finding peace with that along the way yeah, I know. It's obviously it's not just the coronavirus pandemic that's been on no. everyone's mind recently, is it? Like everything just seems to have completely, yeah, g g gone up in flames. It's pretty scary, isn't it? But but trying to find yeah. peace, that, that's, that's a nice way of looking at it. Have, have you been writing about it a lot or have you been sort of under a bit of a block? You know what? As soon as um, lockdown happened, my pen just felt static. At first, I was giving myself a hard time about not writing, thinking, oh, you have to say something, you have to say something. And then after a point, I realized that this is all part of the experience. And the, th the thing is like, the writing doesn't have to be like commoditized, like give space to be human, to feel. And whatever happens, this is going to be a part of my narrative and the world's narrative. So this is going to exist. So I have no, I haven't, that's a long way of saying that I haven't been writing much. <laughs> I've been writing yeah, much. That was the most useful thing I've heard anyone say in a long time about writing or not writing during lockdown. I really appreciate that. I'm not, I've not been writing loads either, right? So I'm not trying to put you under. It's just people always say that, don't they? I don't know. I'm guilty of it now, but I was just curious because I know that some people have been productive, but but like you yeah. say, experiencing it, like that is part of your narrative. So like even when you're not writing, the fact that you're living this now, it's like that in a few years. Yeah. Like that. Like, yeah. And it's like, I think it's like, it's, it's hard to avoid it. I think it's very yeah. hard to, especially to turn to creatives and go, how can we not creating about this? I think if you, if you look at most of the creatives that we appreciate and we listen to, um, they're going to be writing about things that, affected the world that they were living in and it's it's not even like they're not soaking it up it's not like they're not in that moment but yeah like have you been finding times to write i've been trying to but like number one like as i was saying it's, you're under a bit of a fog aren't you like the whole world yeah. shit. it's hard to sort of just like escape you know find escapism and number two 
like I've been trying to scramble around earn whatever money I can. Like you know, when you're a full time writer and suddenly exactly. all my income came from being on stage or being in a classroom. So like, how am I going to write a poem when I'm like? So yeah, that, I've been writing bits and bobs. It's tough in it, mate. It's tough. Yeah, and yeah. I think like that part of it is wild because like everything, especially like if if creativity education is a huge part of your income that's gone so like yeah. the, it's like the rent still needs to be paid the bills need to be paid you still need to eat so it's going to be like like i might be down tesco's next week and that needs yeah. to be that needs to be i need to be thinking about how can i make that a practical um move for my world because yeah and I, I, but the thing is i'm always held positive by the fact that creating is something that I do and it's not that I that I uh, necessarily am. So like regardless of where I need to turn to to make sure that things get paid for, like um, create like I'm not going to stop creating because yeah, of course yeah, like yeah. it's it's, it's in there, it's in there. It's dealing with that initial blow, in it, and sort of like readjusting your yeah. world. I think at first being able to write in that, I'm sort of feeling more able to write now. But yeah, yeah, it's just adjusting, isn't it? It's just yeah. everything just totally flipped. Um, yeah, yeah. I was, taken, and as well, just saying in the intro. Like, sorry, go on. No, as I was gonna say, it's like it's like taking three months to recalibrate. <laughs> like uh, lockdowns lifted, and some people are still like just getting to terms of that change in everything. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's not even really lifted, is it? I mean, it's just... No, oh. no. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, yeah, I was <laughs> that is a whole other, like, segue. You did uh, Live Wire Birmingham with us uh, back in February, 22nd of February, which feels like about 25 years ago. Um, oh, and I know yeah. Selena as well, who obviously Selena was the headliner that night. Um, it's just another world, isn't it? But you were wonderful that night, and I'm really happy that you've agreed to do an Insta session. So, um, do you fancy sharing a poem? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, yeah, I'm going to share a poem. This one, it, it feels, um, I worked on this uh, poem with a guy called, uh, a movement practitioner called Dipraj Singh. And um, I, I'm sharing this one because it's one of those pieces that is, it's, like, it's self-reflective. It's called Man in the Mirror. And this poem officially has choreography from Deeps and actually has choreography from me uh, when me and Deeps were in the room. Uh, he got me to move a little bit. But uh, yeah, is a, uh, that's the poem I'm going to share first of all. Cool. It's called Man in the Mirror. Man in the Mirror. Man above my sink. In his Sunday best, dressed for a marathon of ink. Rewriting the story set on boxing him in. How brilliant and beautiful could he, having owned my feet for a century, be having never left on leave from the paradox gleamed in the silhouettes framed in the name of your Camelot. He is my closest relative in the flesh. I know him, he knows me. I know his seasonal best, his Achilles heel and if he really will, when the pushing turns punishment, pillage the hill. Arm in arm, he carved karma into pebbles and skipped a quiet sermon on a river of sticks, stoking a metaphor. If I never do as a blooded being does, will I dull my diligence and dissipate love? Is it really a cut from the commonplace buzz if I became him and he came up from the mirrors on the wall? Me and mirror in a war to be much more beautiful than anything before. More than anything before, I am sure of the shackles, the chain and the shame that sustains our battle. Just look at me dance by my bathroom sink, all salt in my stare. Well aware of a body that is challenger and challenge, Excalibur and stone, half mellow, half malice, half melanin and gold. Every one of us is sentient and bold. Every one of us was sent to break a mold. 
Every one of us is circuit breaker code sent to corrode the notion that perfection is the goal. And I don't know if I can love without the love for who I am now. The man behind the pain without his spirit is a man down, man above the sink. On his marathon of ink needs his own voice to score the whole challenge that he's in. Yeah. Man, beautiful. Well, you're getting coloured hearts, poetry clicks and mmms, uh, love <laughs> Uh, love heart face emoji so you no, get all, all the feels yeah it's weird because it's just me sat here but a lot of people are very excited about that cool is that, i is think it, yeah it's it's always a weird one doing like um sort of like the digital sphere because you don't get that presence of like the people in the room but everyone seems to um yeah be really supportive and present and vocal about it which is yeah yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's great response, man. Is that the one that you did in Bristol? At the Arnold Phoenix? Yes, I did that one. Because um, I know I did... I did. Two, I think you've seen me do a separate one with a movement collaborator. But I've definitely oh, done that one in Bristol as well. Because I yeah. did another one with uh, Tim Lowe, who's another yeah. brilliant movement practitioner. And we did something more on um, resilience. That was an amazing... So, do you work a lot with like movement practitioners and do you always like visualise your poetry in a theatrical space as opposed to on the page or whatever? Or is it sort of, do you bounce between mediums? Like, I'm terrible on the page. Um, I've realised that and it's something that if anyone reads anything that I've had to write, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I've been, like, I'm very aware that sometimes I go sound over sense and um, I love movement um i'm trying like i used to be i used to move a lot more and i'm trying to do a lot more now and people like deep raj singh are amazing for helping me step back into that but um i'm a huge fan of um spoken word when it's shared with the live audience because there's so many good avenues for that when you use the voice using physicality but yeah yeah i i really resonate with uh movement back heavily i'm sure you're good on the page like i'm sure you're great on the page i, I wouldn't but, uh, if that, but that's, if that's where you visualize it though that's what drives you that's interesting because obviously everybody comes at it from a different angle like when are you writing some people will only see it on a page and then think oh how am i yeah. going to perform this whereas obviously with you it's different so it's just interesting that's all Part of yeah the process, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like uh, i can get super wanky about it but yeah like i've um I like I'm I'm in the process of trying to go from like the verbal to the page and yeah, yeah I, I I'm still in the process of getting it but at the end of the day as like when it comes out live like especially hearing like the stuff that you've done like seeing it on page and then seeing it live it works amazingly that way even like yeah well that's very kind of you to say but I suppose we all go through journeys like yeah, it's just part of your de de development as an artist, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Cool. Um, do you fancy sharing something else? Yeah, I do fancy sharing that. But I do want to plant a seed in between uh, now and then because like, I, I know I haven't re written anything during lockdown. And if time's permitting, I definitely want to get like... Um, if you were to ask... I'm going to ask you the questions because I know the chat doesn't always get popping that quickly i'm gonna ask you matt if you hey. could be yes if you could be any animal in the world what would you be oh um my fiance is obsessed with pandas and i do think they're pretty uh, cool it's so like got a good, good good personality as well a, a panda yeah pandas now they're lovable lovable creatures and like um if what like do you have a favorite saying and if favorite anyone saying. in the chat wants to add something into the mix like feel free go for it favorite animals favorite sayings throw it in the mix i i'm a glutton for punishment i don't know how well this is going to work but i i always like having something that's we're here um, for a good time not a long time pardon? we're here for a, we're here for a good time not a long time nice i like that Good time, not a long time. Yeah. 
And if anybody in the chat is willing to share something on that, Helen like Speed for sure. Huh? Helen Speed in Leeds like fo likes foxes. Uh, Rec Star One likes lemurs. Lemurs. Yeah. All right. I don't know how much of this is going to jump into the mix, but <laughs> I think it's like for me, it's it's been my it's like it's my way of trying to replicate a point where everyone sort of jumps in together. And yeah. people who are watching can feed into it. And cool. hopefully it's not complete garbage because it's, it's great to be here with you, Matt. And I really want to be able to... Uh, Momo. Uh, yeah, I hope so too, Momo, with the snakes. Um, yeah. So at the moment, so far, I've got Unrequited Love. I've got Panda. I've got foxes, I've got here for a good time, not a long time, lemurs and snakes, and less, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it now, I'm gonna leave like a couple of seconds for any extras, but I'm gonna see what happens. It might happen brilliantly, it might flop, but I think it's a chance for us to be organic and here together. Cool. All right. So it goes a little bit like this. I've been rifling through paper clips to try and find sense. Things that couldn't stick together. Dense with the air of politics and time. I'm finding myself sticking to old rhetoric with new vigor, but I love this. It never dies. Unrequited, unspited by the situation. I'm finding myself rolling through tides, through the bushes, munching on the tough branches of the bamboo. I love you more than you think to care for, but I won't pander to the notion of presence. Tough as an ox. Slick as the slyest fox. I will find you anywhere that you're hiding. In your room, there is a little piece of yesterday you carried over, and I think that counts for something a lot more than you think it does. As long as you think back to the suds of Saturday night, living for that good time, not that long time, love is mine and life is a find far better than any gold trinket that you couldn't go out burning while you were home trying to fight the cold. I'm leaping for joy. I can't say that my love is tied to the coins and Rolex and Beamers, but I'm bouncing Lima up into the air, trying to intertwine the confusion with sense. The infusion of dense fabrics of home duvets forming canopies over the scared population, trying to make sense out of everything here. The stakes are high. The snakes are sky high, trying to find their purchase in the fear of the people. I hear how the steeple is silent. People aren't praying as much. I can't say people aren't saying as much because the streets are loud with protest. We haven't forgotten how to love, how to live, how to give for something more than ourselves. Bookshelves crowded with knowledge because we understand that now more than ever, we need to circumvent the dense barriers between together and forever. We're here for a good time and a long time. And I'm sure you can appreciate the everlasting love of everything that is coming to life now. Oh, mate, absolutely yeah. amazing. That was, that was so, so good. Really good. Love that. I love the, the use of the word panda as well as opposed to the animal. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> Quality. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I think I like. I think I. Um, if anyone suggested something and I called it out, I hopefully you could feel that come to life and it was in there in the mix. I apologize if it was meandering too far out, but it's. No, it was great, man. It was quality. It was great. You're getting capital letters, love heart emojis, claps, coloured hearts. You're getting all. Nice. Yeah. yeah, quality, man. Really good. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. No, thank you so much for giving me a chance to take that risk.
it didn't yeah, flop, it. which is a bonus. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's 57 minutes, but we, we can go obviously after because we have the little technical glitch. So if you've got a couple more you want to share, or it's entirely up to you, whatever you feel um, comfortable with. Um, trying to have a good little... Uh, trying to have a think now. I think like I, mean, a, I think sorry, go ahead. I think that we've uh, you now we, we've done a good job. It's been great to be able to have that conversation and stick that in it. And I don't like I know I know myself and my ability to just run for miles. And I don't want to hijack anybody's evening at this point. But um, I can okay. if I do if I do I can do one more. Yeah, one more would be great, I reckon. One more would be lovely. And I'm just going to finish it on one of my favourite pieces because it's convoluted drivel. Hopefully it doesn't land yeah, on deaf ears. Convoluted drivel. It's an oldie but a goodie. Um, yeah. I haven't been making much sense lately. My only compass, a crooked paddle, out haggling for direction, lost in the wash. I never know what started it. Could have been the heartbreak. The echoless laments of love, fiddling with the Rubik of Cupid's sparkle. <laughs> Work's been hard, it could have been that. Oh, could have been that. Last glass of cancerous ale still sneaking through my gravel pit. Or the fact that I have a gravel pit for a pulse that my supposed to's are past due and I'm bartering cause for concern. Bartering my cause for the stern noose of night nectar boozy belly laughs taking their toll on my time here, but who's to judge? Who hasn't loved the summer solstitches? Kissed by the solstice. Pin pricks of sun jutting out your jugular, jumping full of useless drugs. Cooking up storms in hell's kitchen, saving hugs for our fallen Gabriels, tasting solace in our mantras of you only live once and we'll burn those bridges when we get there. I've been mixing my metaphors in drinks for days. Decades decay in the papered parcels of gin, I trust to correct my sins, straight lines, staggering themselves, silly sense. A soft syllable too easily slurred by the seminal serpent seated in my cup, coiled in my gullet, to bloody in my gizzard while we, birds of a feather, flock to the bottom of our bubbling blizzards. We are tomorrow's heroes, but tonight, tonight we drink. Toasting to muted moments, boasting a youth that fades unflinchingly and doesn't take kindly to threats. I was 20 once. On this, one month shy of a milestone's kiss and far too old for this. But this is the freaking weekend. We are swimming in the gauze of the good, bad and ugly, shaken, never stirred. I serve for you the myrrh of a righteous concubine to a blind muse, defining the hues of his principles, both blackened and blued by the bastardish boomerang of Saturday night eve weaved into Monday's hangovers. Clued up on the vinyl forwards of a spinal cord's corrupted syntax, swayed by the source I've been shaking what my mama gave me into the lost and found corners of my favorite nightmares when night's flare was staggering force, And I found my likeness in a daggerless corpse rooting for sustenance in a swill of guilt. And of course I called it decadent. What other name for my public follies were no sorry tacked on. A man of action wronged by his need for fever. Lost, looting, foraging in a forest full of trees. In a forest full of weeds I fall often by dammit I fall well. Stumble punched, star strickeningly drunk, I've learnt to slip to sober up. There is madness in my methods. And I wouldn't have it any other way. My activism is an acrid molasses, too glass slippered to run away. We slow dance till the chimes trigger its flaws. 
And when it's time for us to court, I'm a figureless four, leg locked to the floor, bored, looking for God. Wrestling hope with palms pressed. Hoping I won't be questioned for the days I missed because of the nights I didn't, I have hidden my scars well. Scurrying from the cartels of my shadow self, I have no choice but to part well. Live loudly and rest in peace. I'm sorry if I haven't been making much sense lately. But seated where I stand, not much ever does. Thank you. Beautiful. I'm so happy you shared that one. I absolutely love that poem. That was that was stunning. That was really, really great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have you got anything that you want to plug or anything you want to shout about or any other gigs or anything you want to mention or? Um, I'm going to be with Hammer and Tongue Brighton on Thursday. Uh, nice. Thursday evening. If you check out their socials, that's going to be up and running. Other than that, my um, at the Blissful Nomad on Instagram, the Blissful Nomad on Facebook. Switch up Roving Roshi on on Twitter. But other than that, I'm just out here. So. And well, super excited to have been part of this. Thank you so much, Matt. You were brilliant, man. Thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely mm -hmm. night. And uh, yeah, I'll and speak you. to you soon, of course. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Take, Take care. care. All right. That was the uh, outstanding silent that man's work. I adore his pers persona. I don't not persona, you know what I mean, his personality, he's brilliant, he's fantastic, so make sure you check him out, as he said, it's the Blissful Nomad on Instagram and Facebook, and he's at Roving Roshi on Twitter, uh, check out his website, and keep an eye out, because I think he's going places, I think he's wonderful, so join us again next week, 7.30 to late, UK time, um, I'm joined next week by Genevieve Carver from The Unsung, uh, Genevieve's a wonderful poet, and theatre maker, and lyricist, and singer, and just an all-around good egg. She's fantastic. So, yeah, next week, Genevieve Carver. Uh, my name's Matt Abbott. We are Nimson Fugs. Cheers. Yeah.